Afternoon, everyone. Is everyone having a good DEF CON? That didn't sound real convincing. Is everyone having a good DEF CON? Excellent. All right. This is one heck of a room. There's a lot of apologize if I can't make eye contact with everyone, but I'll try. So, um, thank you uh, for coming to this talk. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, air traffic control and security 2.0. How many people came to my talk last year? Yes, I did. So, wow, not that many. Oh, okay. Well, it's out on the web. One hand over there still raised. So let's let's just get right into it. Um, you know, I've got 20 minutes. Um, and you always have too many slides, so I've tried to pare it down. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about who I am, overview from last year, um, some insecurities today, and a little proposal that I'm proposing out to the crowd. Um, DEF CON sort of has the 20 minute talks be, you know, uh, maybe you don't have the research completed or just some ideas or take it out to the community and see what people think. So that's sort of what I have. I thought this was uh, an interesting uh, little Dilbert here. Um, can everybody read that in the back? I don't want to read a Dilbert. Okay, so who am I? Security guy, whatever, blah, blah, blah. We can keep going. So I wanted to say that first, um, flying is safe. It's one of the safest ways to travel, if not the safest way to travel. Um, after this talk, airplanes are not going to fall out of the sky. Well, not because anything I'm going to say. Um, and so, uh, you know, you know, this is the standard uh, disclaimer slide that everybody needs to do. That's why we have, uh, you know, also EFF. So, uh, any pilots in the audience? Okay. All right. I don't see anybody with the bullshit flags, but uh, you know, if you <laughs> please feel free. <laughs> All right. So, um, um, you know, why did I do the talk last year and this year? Um, you know, air traffic control is moving, busy moving planes throughout the air. Um, in the past, they haven't really been focused on network security equipment because uh, radar scopes were physical radar site and uh, you know physical huge cable back to a uh, one one unit uh, it was a big deal for them when they originally had uh, repeaters and they could actually repeat a scope um, so um, also um, you know sort of just a teaser of what I'm going to talk about um, um, you know AT you know ATC and the FAA has really only been concentrating on you know these days script titties and nation states and I, I think I've uh, come up with another group that uh, they may want to concentrate on more that might be a little more dangerous. So, Okay, a little bit, if a lot of you hadn't been here last year, I'll, I'll give a little bit more on the overview of um, my talk from last year. So um, we talked about how the ATC was running, um, you know, disk operating system. No, no, no. The uh, denial of service attack on an ATC flight plan. So. I proposed last year the idea that let's not take a look at um, you know anything with you know boarding on planes or anything like like that. Let's take a look at um, if we can find a way to do a denial of service attack to stop airplanes from being able to take off. So with commercial flights these days on instrument flight plans, they actually need to submit their flight plan into air traffic control. Air traffic control will give them the routing information back and then the planes are allowed to take off. So um, the idea was if you could find a way to stuff a lot of fake or bogus flight plans into that central machine, um, and overwhelm it, potentially, um, you know, normal flight plans of airlines would not be able to, uh, you know, wouldn't happen. So I thought it was interesting that I got to talk to some uh, people from the FAA, very positive, uh, last year, and they admitted, oh yeah, um, and we did this to ourselves. <laughs> that uh, last year, you know, not last year, you know, that um, air traffic control, they were teaching their new controllers how to actually make and create flight plans on their own production network and in teaching the students on their own production network, the students were hitting the submit button and actually inputting bogus plans into the flight system. So, oh well, I, I guess it was a little justification that uh, potentially that, uh, you know, whole, now they have done some things to uh, uh, mitigate that. Um, to look at the you know number of flight plans per minute that get input in the system, and they have some circuit breakers that they've put in um, for that. Um, a lot of uh, just to make sure their own controllers <laughs> don't don't do it again. Um, last year, I also talked about uh, next gen. Um, this next gen that's going to uh, cure cancer and uh, you know uh, 
it's unbelievable. The uh, next gen is the overcompensing word that the FAA has been using to solve every problem that they have. Um, the idea of uh, um, the idea that um, to be able to reduce delays in all the airports around the country, um, to be able to have airplanes be able to um, vector themselves and get to locations quicker. Um, and one of those pieces is this, uh, is this piece of technology called ADSB, which I mentioned uh, last year. ADSB is a way that each airline, airliner themselves would actually broadcast their latitude, longitude, altitude, and who they are identification uh, in a clear text packet, um, which I thought was interesting. Um, and the idea with ADSB is um, that radar sites are expensive. Um, if we can have all the airplanes broadcasting their specific location, then um, that would save on radar sites and then also allow the FAA to pack more planes in the air um, and be able to have less separation. Um, you know, they have all these intel separations. I'm not a controller, so um, uh, you know, some, of those, some of those buzzwords. So we'll, we'll kind of touch on ADSB again um, in, in in this talk. So what's also interesting that, that's happened from uh, last year, it really seems that for whatever reason from last year to this year, the FAA seems like they have some funding. They have some of, some of the biggest contracts. Uh, I don't know if anybody, any, anybody has uh, gotten any FAA contracts. Uh, maybe nobody wants to raise a hand. But um, <laughs> but uh, some very large um, you know, million and billion dollar contracts have the FAA has gone out to this, this second bullet about um, trying to generate and create next-gen technologies of, um, you know, the, these ideas of, you know, an air traffic control tower that could be virtual um, and have one control tower in one central location and that one control tower would be able to be turned on and, you know, work in San Francisco or, or, or any control tower. Um, it, it's kind of interesting. So also it, it's been a little disappointing. Some of my um, you know, people that I've met through the FAA, there sort of seems to be a little bit of brain drain. Um, I don't know, maybe that's just normal ebb of flow of things, but I just found that, um, you know, a little interesting of, um, you know, some people getting frustrated of, uh, of the, you know, FAA administration. Okay, so I guess I jumped a little ahead with, uh, with this slide. So the next gen ATC is the idea of you know, converting from proprietary hard hardware to commercial off-the-shelf hardware. Um, right now, um, some of the scopes and uh, uh, things that the controllers are using to um, navigate planes throughout the air are, are pretty old and some old technology. Um, and, you know, just like anything, this first bullet, you know, I could even cover and say ATC, you know, the, the, the power companies and SCADA and, and a lot of people have seen, once when you switch from proprietary hardware, to commercial off the shelf, you introduce a whole lot of things. Um, the FAA also um, was, they had all these dedicated links around the country and now they're doing more VPN and, and trying to use more internet. Classic things you hear, you know, in, you know, in the enterprise and large corporations of the, you know, all the same problems you all might, might think of. Um, what was interesting that the next gen, the idea that they were, they felt that radar sites were very expensive to maintain, so that whole IDSB, but then you have um, things like, well, you know, as, as far as NORAD now responsible for tracking all airplanes inside the country as well as outside, um, NORAD still has responsibilities for uh, wanting those radar sites for, for reasons. So, um, you know, their initial thing that there would be a major cost savings getting rid of radar sites seems that it's not that true anymore, that they're still needing to keep them around. And then this idea of um, you know switching from a radar uh, sweep to generally knowing where our airplane is from every airplane out there, um, mandatory having a um, transponder that'll report latitude, longitude, altitude in, in clear text, and that's this idea of ADSB. Uh, just recently, the FAA um, mandated that that will be a requirement for most airlines in the um, in very bu in busy airspace by 2020. Now you say 2020, it seems like a long way out, but if you've known um, you know any sort of anything, uh, 2020 will be here pretty darn quick. Um, I'm always amazed at physical construction projects when they're building a road or whatever. Those are 25 year to 30 year projects when you when you see them 
uh, digging the side of the road. Um, and um, so it, it'll be interesting. So something I'm proposing out to the thing that I was sort of thinking about all this, and I don't know, maybe I'm, you know, full of whatever, but so wouldn't it be interesting if we could get a live feed of every plane in the air? Um, you know, we've all been out to those websites that uh, um, you can track live flights. You know, we've probably all tracked our spouse's flight as it goes across the country. Realize that's not all. That's a subset of the planes um, that are out there. Um, you know, and you know the idea, do you climb fences or hack the FAA to get that? Um, and then I thought, you know, um, maybe there's another way. So, and I, I like this quote, and I know everybody says that anytime you see a quote, it could be taken out of context. Um, but, you know, the FAA notes that there is no right to privacy when operating the NES, National Airspace System. So, no right to privacy. Um, and specifically, what I was thinking about was there are, uh, how many people came here to DEF CON on an executive jet? Anybody? Executive jets? No? You can, it's okay to raise your hand. Oh, I got one. Good for you. Good for you to be brave. A two, maybe. Good for you. I want to be your friend. <laughs> so um, those executive jet guys, I don't know how many people know this, that um, when you own an executive jet in certain planes, you can request to the FAA, you know what, I would like my tail number not to be rebroadcast out to the internet or third party providers. Uh, there's two different layers that they can do that. They can ever actually have it um, not be rebroadcast um, internally or even that the FAA sees it and it's not uh, rebroadcast out to um, third parties. Um, you know, maybe, uh, y you know, an uh, example, large company, if, if you could uh, be able to see that two different, la two large companies, their executive jets, um, you know, went to the same location, potentially you could say, well, maybe those two com companies are about to merge. Or, um, you know, the, these large companies, they feel that it's a security risk that uh, you know that they're, um, you know, right after the uh, stock market crash, everybody goes to Aspen. <laughs> so, um, uh, I kind of was also focusing on that, you know, that there's, there's these sort of stealth planes, and not, uh, not stealth, but planes that are still flying in the national airspace system that we, that they still are allowed to use the services of the public, but we're not allowed to track to see where they go. But notice the quote. Okay. So why don't we take it a step farther? Why don't we create our own? FAA real-time flight tracking database. Why try to even get into the crown jewels of the FAA? You know what? Leave them over there. Why don't we make it ourselves? And you're saying, what? Well, think about it. Um, right now, um, deployed in Florida and Alaska, ADSB is already deployed and also through the, the Gulf of Mexico um, with some antennas that would be listening to two different um, transponder frequencies, you would be able to um, passively listen, um, not against the law right now, it is for cellular signals, but not against the law right now, listen to that, you'd be able to get the latitude, longitude, and ID of the plane, um, and then put in a database. Um, you know, think about it, uh, you know, just even in the city of Aspen, seeing the executive jets land and, and seeing that. Um, you would be able to, you know, take a third-party feed and see all the, you know, all the planes that are actually out there and then, you know, take that and take it away to see, you know, what planes do you guys, you know, what planes does your own database see that, you know, aren't out there. Um, there was a real good um, Freedom for Information Act where they, uh, that I think they actually went, it might have been NASA, that they actually got for whatever reason NASA had the data that they got the list of aircraft tail numbers that were on that blocked list. You know, good on then. I think even EFF might have helped them with that. Um, but that was just a static list. Um, so what, you know, the whole so what? You know, I, I always, whenever I do something, the whole so what? So, you know, what, what do you think the marketing people would do with this stuff? Foursquare and be able to know where we are and you know real time.